Hello and welcome back. In the last video we finished up our physics pointer and in this one we're going to be working on the canvas pointer. Since we've already handled all of the input we just need to handle the pointer portion. And in the last video we disabled the canvas so the first thing we need to do is re-enable that. And then I'm going to go to the camera rig and I'm going to go to my right hand and let's just disable or delete the physics pointer for now. And we'll go to the prefabs folder so we can get the canvas pointer. And we'll child that, where this also has a camera, a line renderer, a canvas pointer. But the big difference between the canvas pointer and the physics pointer is that it doesn't have the physics raycaster on it. And let's do this now before I forget. Let's go to our event system. We'll replace our event camera. And then we'll go to our canvas itself, where we're going to need to set the event, actual event camera here. So we'll do that there. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's go to our script. And we're going to want to open up both our canvas and physics pointer because we're just going to copy and paste some stuff from the physics pointer to the canvas pointer. All right, and here we are within our physics pointer. Where the first thing that we're going to do is we'll just copy our two variables and all the way down to our update length. We'll copy that and we'll put this into our canvas pointer. Then we'll come back here and we'll just need to take this default end function as well. And then we'll create a new function really quick that we'll just call get end. And we'll just have it return a vector 3.0 for now. And we'll replace this calculate end with getting that get end. But we're also going to need to add another function for getting the distance of our canvas. So we'll write private floats and we'll just write get canvas distance. And we'll just return zero for now. And this pointer is a little bit more involved than our physics pointer because we're going to need to access our event system as well as our input module to get the distance for how long we need to render our line renderer. But we'll need to create one more function and then we'll sort of start from the top and add our variables and all that good stuff. And then I'll sort of start to begin to explain what each of these functions are going to do. But we'll need to create another function that's going to return a raycast result. And we'll just call it find first raycast. And we're going to be passing in a list of raycast results. That we're just going to call results. And we'll just return null for now. All right, so let's add some specific variables we'll be needing for this. We'll need to add one for our event system and another for our standalone input module. And you'll notice that we do have some duplicate code here from our physics pointer to our canvas pointer. That was originally going to be solved using our pointer base class here, but decided we're not going to use that because generally I would recommend either using the canvas pointer or the physics one. I probably wouldn't try and use both at the same time unless you want to make a more of a Frankenstein version of your own that combines both of them. But for simplicity's sake, I usually like to go with either a physics pointer or a canvas one. But like before, we have our awake, we have our update, we have our update length, and then for our get end. Our get end is going to be very similar to our calculate end from our physics pointer, but instead of a raycast, we're going to need to access our event system to figure out how far our canvas is away from our pointer. So the first thing that we'll do is create a float that we're going to call distance. And we're going to be calling that get canvas distance function. And then we'll create another one of vector three that we'll call end position. And we'll just be calling default end and passing in our default length. However, for this pointer, the default end function is actually going to have a couple of different uses. It's going to obviously be trying to figure out the default end of our line render, but we'll also be using it for passing in the actual distance that our camera or that our canvas is from our pointer. So we may want to rename this to instead of default end, we'll just call this one calculate end. And this may look a little bit familiar in terms of structure where we're going to get a distance. We'll be setting up our end position. And the thing is, when we try and get the distance of our canvas, if there isn't an object for us to hit, that value we're going to get a zero. 
So we'll write if our distance is not equal to zero, then our in position is going to be calculate end, and we'll be passing in that distance. So this is gonna look pretty similar to that function in our physics pointer. For calculating end, where we have our ray cast hit, our end position, if we hit something, then we wanna update that end position to our hit point. It's very similar in structure for that. But a lot of the code that we're gonna be writing is gonna be in our git canvas distance. You'd be surprised how involved it is. So I think it's about 10 lines, so. And you'll sort of start to see why we need both our event system as well as our standalone input module. And we'll write some simple comments out here just to sort of illustrate what we're gonna be doing. So the first thing that we need to do is get the data. We then need to raycast using that data because we're gonna raycast, we need to get all of those results, and we need to see whichever canvas object is closest to us. So we wanna raycast using data. We wanna get the closest. And then just in case that canvas object is much further than our default length, let's clamp the value that we're gonna get for our distance. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new object of the type pointer event data. And we'll just call it event data. And we'll set it to a new pointer event data. And the constructor of this only accepts an event system. So we're already gonna be using that event system variable that we have up at the top. And then for our event data, we're gonna to wanna to set its position. And we're gonna get that from that input module. So we have that standalone input module. We're gonna be accessing that input override. And if you remember, we are overriding it using that VR input script. And then we wanna get the mouse position. And what this lets us do is reuse that code we already have for the VR input for getting a point in the center of the screen. And now that we sort of have this fake pointer event data that we wanna use for the center of our screen, we need a raycast from that. So we need to create a list of raycast results. And if we look at that, I believe this is specifically for like UI objects. So let's go in there and look specifically for the event systems. So it may look a little bit different than what you're sort of used to seeing. And then we'll just be calling this results. We'll create a new list of type raycast result. And then we're gonna use our event system to raycast all. And this function takes two pieces of data. It has our pointer event data, which we've already created. And it's gonna use that piece of data to populate a list. And we've already created a list of raycast results, so we can just write results in there. And I'm not sure if this has a comment or anything with it, so let's look at that. No, it doesn't, but you can see that it's part of the event system that inherits from UI behavior. Actually, I just had the thought, let's look at the event system so we can take a closer look at this raycast all function. And here we can see that we're inside the event system script, and if we go down here, I've already highlighted it. The summary says, raycast into the scene using all configured base raycasters. And what it's gonna do is the list, whatever we're putting in there, it's gonna clear it first. It's gonna go through the raycast manager. It's gonna get all the raycasters. And it's gonna go through all of those, and it's going to use the module for each of the raycasters. It's gonna raycast from it using that piece of event data. And then it's going to put it into that list that we're providing. And I think that's it for the event system. Let's go back into Unity. So we have that raycast all, and now we wanna get the closest where we're just gonna create a new variable of type raycast result that we'll just call closest result. And we'll write the function find first raycast, which we haven't written anything in there yet, so don't worry. And we'll just be giving it our results. And then once we have the closest result, we're gonna create a new variable called distance and we'll get that closest result and we'll get the distance value from it. So, so far we're getting the data from our input module. We're raycasting using that data from the center of our event camera that's on our pointer. And we're getting all the things that we could potentially be hitting. And then we're gonna find the closest one so we can get the distance. And then we wanna clamp that distance. So this is just in case that canvas object may be beyond our default length. We don't wanna draw a line render all the way out to it. So we'll have a distance, and we'll just write mathf.clamp. 
we'll write distance and we'll have a value of zero and then we'll put in our default length for our max value and then we'll just want to return our distance and that's quite a bit just to get the distance from our pointer to our canvas but it's the only real way i think that we can do it without doing some even more jankier way but we're almost done we need to find the first raycast so let's go into our find first raycast function and i believe this is a function that is used within the base event systems but we don't have access to it so we're just basically rewriting it here and we'll start with a for each loop that we can go through all of those raycast results result in our results and then for each of those we need to make sure that we actually have a game object that we're hitting. And if we don't want to have a game object, then we'll just continue. And then we just want to return our results. But if we don't have anything, we'll just want to return a new sort of empty raycast result. And this will give us that, I believe this will give us that value of zero. This may look a bit weird, but when we're getting back that list of Raycast results, it is already sorting it for us. So we're going through the list and we're saying, hey, let's go through each of these Raycast results to see if there's an actual game object that we can use. So we'll look at that sort really quick, and then I want to see if I can find where I got this function from in the event system. And we can see back within our event system script, we can see that it's using this Raycast results and it's sorting it using this Raycast compare, which is happening up here. Now, to be honest with you, don't necessarily know what that does, but I did find where I found that find first recast. So let's go and look at that really quick. And that can be found within this base input module script where the summary for it says return the first valid recast result, where this is basically the function that I rewrote within the canvas pointer. So it finds the first recast where we pass in a list. It'll go through that list. If it doesn't have a game object, it'll skip it. But if it does, it's going to return that result. But if we don't have anything valid, we'll just return an empty object. And that about does it for the programming. Let's go back into Unity to see if this works. Actually, before I went back into Unity, I wanted to look over the script to make sure we got everything right, but we did miss one thing. In get end, I set it to vector 3.0 and I forgot to fix that or change that. You may have noticed it already, but I tend to do that a lot. All right, so that's it. Let's go back into Unity. And now that we're back in Unity, let's go to our event system and we want to drag that into both the event system as well as the input module. And that about does it for the setup for the scene. Let's hit play and hopefully this works. And there we go. It all seems to be working pretty well. We're getting our in, our out, as well as our click events. And that about does it for this video as well as this series. If we have any additional requests, we may revisit this in the future to add more features onto it. So if you have a suggestion, feel free to leave a comment below or if you have any problems. But that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.